Okay, let's take a look at the Pythagoras theorem. Okay, and a couple of terms we need to go through. The Pythagoras theorem only works with right triangles, and that's essentially any triangle that has a right angle, a 90 degree angle. If you don't have a 90 degree angle in it someplace, you can't do the Pythagorean theorem. So when we look at this, we're going to have to label this triangle. First piece, is the hypotenuse. That is the longest side of any right triangle. And the way I remember which one it is, it's because this right angle points at the hypotenuse. And the other two sides are our legs. I don't care which one is leg one and leg two, it really doesn't matter. The hypotenuse is the only one that really matters. Another way to look at this, and way you may have done it in other books, hypotenuse is always C, and our legs are A and B. A and B doesn't matter which one is which, but your hypotenuse has to be C. And here we've got our formulas. This first one, hypotenuse squared equals leg one squared plus leg squ two squared, that's our basic Pythagorean theorem. Our second formula, this one right here, leg squared equals hypotenuse minus squared minus the other leg squared, that's just using some algebra to change the, our Pythagorean theorem around into a different form. It is the same theorem. You might be more familiar with seeing this as c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Or the one on the right, you might be more familiar with it as b squared equals c squared minus a squared. Remember c being our hypotenuse, a and b being our legs. And on the right, the other variation you might be familiar with is a squared equals c squared minus b squared. One leg squared equals the hypotenuse squared minus the other leg squared. So here, this question just asks us, write out the Pythagorean theorem. Basically, we want our hypotenuse squared equals our first leg squared plus our second leg squared. This picture is missing something. We don't have, know for sure which ones are right angles. We can see which ones we look like right angles. But in math class, if you don't see a right angle symbol, we can't assume it's a right angle. So I'm just going to put these in. I want you to put them in on your notes too. Those are right angles in our books. Let's do A. First step, identify which one is the hypotenuse. Remember, your right angle points at the hypotenuse. So it must be that Y right there. That piece needs to come out first. And because our Pythagorean theorem has squares, it's Y squared equals, and then the X and the Z you put in any order. X squared plus Z squared. There's our Pythagorean theorem. Do the other two. Longest side is D. It's because the right angle points at it. D squared equals F squared plus E squared. Hypotenuse squared equals leg squared plus leg squared. Question C, our hypotenuse is N because this right angle points at it. We must have N squared equals, and I'm going to use the other two legs now, P squared plus M squared. There's my Pythagorean theorem for all of these questions. All right, let's do a couple more examples where we actually use Pythagorean theorem as opposed to just setting it up. Question asks, find the lengths of any unknown sides. E is the only side we don't know. And before we can start writing things down, we need to label which one's the hypotenuse and which ones are the legs. My right angle points at the hypotenuse, so E must be my hypotenuse. From here on in, I'm just going to call it hype for short. If E is our hypotenuse, these other two must be legs. Write down my formula. Let's put in what we know. My hypotenuse is E, so I'm going to square that. E squared equals 9 centimeters squared plus 12 centimeters squared. Let's do those squares. Add those two numbers together, and I get E squared equals 225. But that's not our triangle leg length yet, because we still have an E squared, and our triangle is just E. So the opposite of a square is a square root. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides, that cancels the squared on the E. So E equals the square root of 225, which after checking my calculator, ends up being 15. We're working in centimeters, so it must be centimeters. Next question, let's find out H. Still going to start by labeling my triangle. That right angle points at nine meters. That's my longest side of my triangle. So that must be my hypotenuse. These other two must be my legs. Let's write down our formula. Except this time, I'm not solving for the hypotenuse. Let's try one of the other ones. There we go. That one will give me what I need. Put our numbers in. I'm going to put an H in instead of leg one. 
I filled in the hypotenuse and the leg as well. Keep in mind, the hypotenuse has to be your biggest side. Do those squares. 9 squared is 81, 7 squared is 49. When I subtract the 2, I get, I get h squared equals 32. It's still squared, so I have to take the square root of both sides. That's going to cancel out the squared on the h. And the square root of 32 ends up rounding off to 5.7. And that's meters, because that's what we're working in. There's my missing side. A quick check that you should always do. Your hypotenuse needs to be the longest side of your triangle. If you solve for a leg that is longer than the hypotenuse, or a hypotenuse that is shorter than one of the legs, someplace you've got a mistake. Let's solve for one more side of a triangle. My right angle points at that side right there, so that is my hypotenuse. So this must be a leg, and this must be a leg. I'm going to jump straight to the second formula. Then I'm going to put my numbers in. Let's calculate our squares. Do our difference there, so we're going to subtract those. Last step is to get rid of the square on x by taking the square root, which means I'm also going to have to take the square root of the other side. Square root of 25 ends up giving me 5. Now my question didn't have any units, so my answer doesn't have any units.